Radiance Band. Alrighty. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Steel Series Southeast Asian Cup Season 3. This is Game 1 of the Best of 3 between Titan from Malaysia and Maneski yeah, so from the Philippines. Um, thank you of course to the sponsors of this tournament being Steel Series and Dota Talk for very kindly allowing me and my co-cast today, Blaze, to cast this. What's up? Not too much. Excited to see what these two teams bring to the table. I've seen a lot of Titan and I already like what they've been doing as a relatively new roster and of course Maneski is always fun to watch. Oh, Maneski is crazy. I was casting them yesterday and the game, first game um, versus uh, Impervious, it was like 80 kills in 40 really? minutes or something. It was terrible. Oh my goodness. I lost my voice. But you had a 100 kill game, didn't you, with Titan or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I don't think it was, it wasn't Titan. Titan had a, a kind of a more casual one. They just had Ohio farming away and they, they did their own thing. The series after that, first departure versus um, Mythrust was oh. all over the place. That was fun. Yeah, I can only imagine. First of all, it's always great to play. Great to play. Great to watch play. Anna says myth. Oh well. But yeah, I'm expecting some good things from tonight. Both of these teams usually play quite aggressive. I mean, Titan, previously they were orange before they lost Mushy and got a replacement um, player. And I'm not going to say who because every time I say I get it wrong and everyone yells at me. Hmm. Ice. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> My boyfriend just pointed it out. Um, but yeah, they've, they've been having a little bit of issues from what I've seen. So they don't have like a dedicated drafter at the moment. They kind of switch it around a little bit. And and they often yeah, seem to good. pick a lot more support heroes because they don't really have... Did give that look. Um, they often seem to draft a lot more support-ish heroes and not really have like a, I guess, a strong carry. At least from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. My boyfriend's laughing at me and disagrees. So he's, he's crawling into the corner now. Um... But yeah, and that's that's what I've noticed from Titan. And same with Mineski, they sh they switch their roles around so much. Like half the time, Blake, Jay plays mid. Last night we saw um, Jules. No, was it Jules? Yeah, it was Jules playing mid, and they're just switching roles around like crazy. So gosh knows what to expect from this game. Yeah, most definitely. I, I would say that still Titan, of course, pick up a standard number one carry. Like I, I saw Ohio do some really good Luna play and stuff like that. But you're absolutely right in the fact that they don't put as much into item reliant heroes as most teams in the Eastern scene do. Like a lot of times you see dual cores, tri cores coming out, just getting very greedy with that late game potential. But Titan's happy to use the potential of all their supportive players. I mean, X. Uh, net both really really amazing lane supports that roam actively and they generally want heroes that can allow them to do that and really make their mark on the map early so uh, I definitely think that they're probably going to prioritize that maybe not the first couple of picks because they're so flexible they have plenty of different options but I wouldn't be surprised to see something like a Crystal Maiden picked up with the Elder Titan yeah I could definitely see that happening and Meniski picking up that Earthshaker they're on the Radiant side, but still, they're very fond of the Earthshaker. I've seen Jay playing him multiple times, and they'll spend, from what I've seen at least, they spend a lot of the time just using the Earthshaker Fissure since it was buffed to block the lanes and then pulling the Ancients and pulling mm -hmm. the, the Creep Wave in mid to farm and, and the, the jungle. So, I mean, I'm kind of expecting that, but I mean, on the whole, Mineski usually go for those aggressive picks. Yeah, and I mean, they don't usually go for the tricore like you were saying. You've seen Titan do. Normally, they go for more uh, semi carry. So we'll see a lot of you know Queen of Pain, um, OD who goes for fast items like a straight four star, or um, not really picking up the mech, just going more straight four star into hex type items just to get as much mm -hmm. damage out as possible. So if Titan do go for a tricore, they might get punished slightly by Mineski, but of course they've got the Elder Titan now, so that's a lot of damage coming out in the other game. And there's that Crystal Maiden, like you said. Radiant. Mm -hmm. Good early it's just sports. a great combo, really. I mean, the Elder Titan can be played in the mid, but we've seen uh, Western teams like Na'Vi running them mostly in the dual supportive role, where either a dual lane or a tri lane, the ET and the Crystal Maiden together, uh, just go hand in hand with how they can harass a lockdown from CM to disables at level 2, and then Elder Titan adding in a huge amount of damage, especially if he goes for that 0-4-4-0 build. But in turn, Mineski picking up the lifesteal, a great pick against both these heroes, especially the Crystal Maiden, since obviously he can rage right out of that Frostbite and make it mostly a non-factor. Yeah, I do like the lifesteal of pickup. It could be... I mean, actually, I haven't even seen them play lifesteal in a long time. It's not... Usually, they don't pick the lifestealer up, from what, I've, what I remember. Um... Hmm. 
they they usually go for I mean, for what I've seen a lot of like Earthshaker Puck lanes where Puck's been banned out. Um, Odie, like I mentioned, he's picked up a lot. Weaver, though they banned Weaver out this game, maybe they're just trying something completely different because the heroes are banned out. The ones they normally pick, they normally pick up the Odie, the Razor quite a lot. Um, so yeah, I wonder if they're going to put the lifestyle maybe in the off lane, combo it with a range support, just because lifestyle, like you said, he's got that rage, so he doesn't have to worry about being ganked, and then running maybe a, a dual core. Sorry, a dual um, a dual core. Yeah, that's what I mean. With life stealer plus the support, and then a shaker roaming around, and then a mid hero like a queen of pain, something like that, to get some ganks off, and then have a life stealer combo in the mid game, and uh, mm -hmm. like a carry on the bot lane, I suppose. Normally, you put a carry on the bot lane Resilient. if you're a yeah. radiant. <laughs> yeah, generally speaking. So uh, in this situation, uh, they already have a great turtle presence with the air shaker. They can afford to draft so as if the game's going to go an extra 10 minutes or so, go in towards that late game status. So like you said, they're probably going to pick up at least a second carry, if not a third. And uh, right now, their, their bands are very, very wise of what they don't want to have to deal with. Uh, they, because they picked up the Light Stealer, you don't want to have to deal with that Razor. This, the static link is just so powerful against the Nakes. Taking off that board is very important. But seeing as Titan gets the first pick in the second phase, if the Razor is not an option, you have to take out that OD as well. So very, very smart on their part. In the meantime, Titan is going to be banning out the Puck and the Clockwork, which are both great long-range initiators that can use the Life Stealers and Vest as a, a just a sort of moving bomb. They either blink in or orb in or hook shot in, and the Life Stealer is going to be there to do a heck of a lot of damage and bring down whatever carry Titan picks up. Yeah, that's very true. But, I mean, Queen of Pain is still in the pool, and I think she's mm -hmm. a one of the better combos with Life Stealer because she has an innate blink. Whereas with that pop Cob, it's pretty easy to, to dodge that because it's so slow and farming up a blink, you don't normally get that till the 15 minute mark or so. Um, so I kind of am, I am feeling an Earthshaker Queen of Pain lane in the off lane now looking at the ban outs that they've had from both teams. But Titan at the moment, very open draft because Elder Titan, you can go mid, like you said, getting that uh, 0440 build. He can go in the off lane. Um, he can go as a roaming support with the Crystal Maiden. I mean, he can do pretty much anything. So... I would I would like them to pick up something like a Shadow Fiend or a Luna, a hero with innate magical as well as physical damage, just to combo with that natural order. Because um, if if you go for a hero, like I've seen a couple of times, people pick up things like uh, man, I forgot the name of the hero. Like Phantom Lancer, for example, who does decent magical damage, but not much physical damage until later in the game, and you kind of lack the early game potential with the Elder Titan with that natural order. And there's a Queen of Pain, like we're saying. Definitely. Now I'm curious, I haven't, might just be my inexperience in the, the water, uh, spectating the Eastern scene, generally speaking, but uh, how do people view Storm Spirit as far as that goes? Because Queen Pain and Storm Spirit are kind of in the similar classification, other than the fact that Storm does take into level 6 to get his mobility up. Um, but it kind of feels to me like the Storm might be a more instantaneous long range initiation. Why do you think they would go for the Queen of Pain over the Storm here? I reckon Storm's just very easy to gank. Queen of Pain, you know, at level 1, if she gets a blink up, she can escape from ganks. But mm -hmm. Storm Spirit, if you're going to have a Roman Crystal Maiden and Naga Siren coming in, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. And Ursa Warrior being picked up. So that's a really nice counter to the Life Stealer. And if they do have, for example, if they have Elder Titan in the mid lane or off lane, Ursa on the easy lane farming, and Naga Siren Crystal Maiden roaming around, those two supports Naga Siren net going through the rage. So that does mean mm -hmm. Life Stealer is going to be trapped down, and Ursa can just rip him apart using that Fury Swipes and the uh, Overpower to just hit him down a couple of hits. Yeah. And along with that, the Frostbite is going to be really good against Queen of Pain, disabling the Blink means that they're going to be able to actually get some rotating ganks on mid very early on. So we're talking the first five or six minutes. I expect Queen of Pain to probably be dropped down if they don't have great ward coverage and great map awareness against smoke ganks. So I actually really do like Titan's draft here. Whether, wherever they land the Elder Titan, they pretty much have at least stable lanes. And then from there, they can take the fight to Mineski as is per their style. And like you said, Ursa is such a great counter pick versus Lifestealer. But <laughs> countering the counter, we do see Viper on the board. Oh, that's a very aggressive pickup, considering they've already got the Life Stealer, the Queen of Pain, and the Viper. Um, I mean, I'm kind of feeling that Life Stealer is going to go for those very early game items, like the you know face boots into a drum, maybe picking up an armlet. But basically, he's going to be helping out the team early because Viper, he needs a decent amount of farm. I'm going to be honest. I think Viper is very strong in lane, just being able to orb walk. But in that kind of mid game, when people are shifting around to ganking, he's got low move speed. It's a 285, I think, base, so he's comparable to Crystal Maiden. I mean, he usually needs to get up phase boots or treads or something to help him get around the map. And then he also needs mana items so he can, you know, harass with that orb walk plus levels. I mean, he's he would be a good mech, not mech carrier. Um, well, he usually does carry the mech, but a Midas carrier, given that the meta game is kind of shifting to Midas. But it's still mm -hmm. going to require him to get enough farm to pick up a Midas. Yeah. 
The big thing is Viper's Agadim's timing. If he can get that Agadim Scepter up to the point where he can keep, not necessarily a permanent slow, but a very high uptime slow on the Ursa that will ignore whether or not he has BKB, uh, it's really just going to be a very limiting factor for Ursa. I mean, your general options for a second core item on Ursa are ones that kind of close the gap. Whether you go Shadow Blade or Blink Dagger um, is your kind of different options there. But in this case, he might even have to go for something like a Force Staff if the Viper is really on the ball. Uh, with his slowing effects where they can just kite him out. But in turn, a really cool pickup. Rubik is going to be good in just about any situation. N Life Stealer isn't the best to steal from, but just about everybody else is. The Viper, after level 6, is always going to have his Viper Strike as the last spell that he casts. And so that is essentially going to be a guaranteed steal for him. Or I can pick up things like a no animation delay Fisher or a Blink or Scream Sonic Wave from the Queen of Pain. So a lot of great spells on the field here. But if you look at that Ruby pickup, they've got a Crystal Maiden, a Naga Siren, and a Ruby, three traditional supports. So I do wonder if maybe the Ruby's going to be taking the mid lane and Elder Titan in the off lane, or if they're going to have uh, dual lanes with Rubik, Naga Siren, Ursa, Crystal Maiden farming up, or how are they going to do this? Mm -hmm. Because at least it's one of uh, Ruby or Naga are going to have to be a core at the moment. Definitely. It's, there's a lot of different ways they could run it. I mean, with the recent addition of Aghanim Scepter, there's more rewards to farming up a Rubik. But I still think, comparatively speaking, the Naga Siren is higher priority in that scale. So we do see KYXY picking him, uh, the Naga Siren up, and uh, KYXY, I've seen him mostly been running on the mid. So we'll see how that plays out. But I, I would love to see maybe just like a CM Elder Titan and then a Rubik Ursa on the other lane, 2 1 2. Yeah, I could, I could definitely dig a 2 1 2 coming out from. Titan. Oh, I will be farming. Maybe it's going to be a dual lane mid, yeah. Or 2-2-1. Two, two, or maybe they go... I don't know. I guess we'll have to see what they go through with the with the lanes. I mean, mm -hmm. Ice normally does play the offlane, doesn't he? What does he play mid? It looks like he's going for offlane, so I think they're going to be doing a, a Nagasar in mid. That's very, very interesting, and I feel like she's going to have a lot of trouble against the Queen of Pain. If Queen of Pain goes mid, but it looks like she's heading top. Anyway, whatever. I'm going to go for the players quickly and let them decide their own lanes. Um, sure. On the side of Mineska, you've got Jay playing that Earthshaker. Josh is going to be, or Oa, is going to be on the Visage. Jesse Vash playing the Lifestealer. Viper going to be played by Joven and Jules on the Queen of Pain. You want to go through Titan? Fair enough. Over on Titan, we do have Nat playing the Crystal Maiden. It's going to be Ohio piloting the Ursa. KYXY is running that Naga Siren. Then we do have X on the Rubik. Leaving a uh, the Elder Titan to Ice. And we are going to be seeing the five men in top, so maybe going to catch Jules, but Jay is ready to back him up with a Fissure if he does get caught out of position. Yeah, I don't think they can really engage in this position here. Not too big a deal, but they just want to make sure the wards don't go down. They do have access to their poles as they want. Has been nerfed a bit in 6.79, but it's still a pretty big asset if you're going to be committing multiple heroes to this top lane. Um, interesting buildup for the Elder Titan, starting with Boots of Speed. He really is just going to be moving about if he feels comfortable in the lane, he can use the buff that he gets from Astral Spirit to get a number of really good right clicks on uh, one of the two opponents down bottom. And if not, then he can just make sure that he is maneuvering and staying alive and just getting in experience range at the very least. But there is a little bit of a skirmish back on top, right clicks back and forth, but not much more than that. Yeah, and the good thing about getting boots first in offlane Elder Titan is since the Astral Spirit does actually buff, buff, buff your move speed as well, you can use it to you know, get some last hits, and then if you do get initiated on, you can run away super speedy. So I, I do like that pickup, and maybe Net, I can just see him on top lane actually, he's just having a little bit of a wander around. But I kind of wonder if he's going to be hanging out in the jungle for a little bit, because I don't feel like they really need him in this top lane at the moment. I mean, he could just do some pulling, but he could also, you know, let Ohio get enough farm by himself with um, Extinct helping out, and then just rotate into the jungle by you know, himself and farm up the... Uh, the big camp just to get some levels up on himself because I, I really don't feel like he's needed a top lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely agree with you there. Uh, I mean, Crystal Mane is very viable to jungle at level one with the Frostbite, so that's what we're going to see Ned do. Uh, we have seen different players playing their Crystal Maiden, doing this exact thing and moving in towards a Hand of Midas to try to really, really just stimulate their farm. But, well, obviously that's going to be a very gradual approach. And the best part about it is this allows X to be, or sorry, Net to be in a position where he can roam on the mid lane at a moment's notice. And that could actually cause some trouble for the Viper, who relies on being out of range of the opponent. Yeah, and it does create pressure on the map, because they know that a Crystal Maiden, like you said, one of the better roamers um, in the game, is off the map. They don't know where she is. They don't know if she's, you know, smoked up down bot lane. They don't know if she's at mid lane or top lane. And it does mean that Mineski are going to have to watch their positioning, because if they get caught out of position... You know, could cause their death. And you can see by their wards, they are just concentrating on this top lane. Look at those mm -hmm. wards. 
Both of them yeah. just designed to defend them. Actually, they will catch Ned out, so... Yep. Interesting position. They're still going to go here for, on the telekinesis on the Queen of Pain. It's allowing Ohio to pursue and with this Frostbite do a lot of damage. It might be the first blood. Yes, Crystal Maiden will seize that first blood and now Jay will go in full retreat. Has a Fissure, but the animation is so long that once he throws it, he's still going to take too much damage. And that's going to be a double kill for Crystal Maiden to start things off. <laughs> that is definitely a really nice start for Ned. Now he could pick up the Tranquil Boots and just start roaming around with that Tranquil Boots buff. As soon as he hits level 3 and gets up one level on the Arcane Aura, he never runs out of health and he never runs out of mana. And so mm -hmm. that does give him some of the best roaming viability in the game, I would say. But we can see actually Ice on bot lane has picked up a Haster and he's hitting into mid lane. Maybe we can do a bit of harassment mm -hmm. on Joven. Yeah, I'm not sure if they can get a kill, but actually, Viper is sitting on 200 HP, 100 now, dropping low. Last right click will go to Elder Titan, and yeah, they have just enough to bring him down. And that's actually due to some surprising harassment coming from Naga Siren. Usually, you wouldn't expect a, a Viper just to be sitting at lane of, in lane at 40% HP, but he was just trying to trade hits a little bit back and forth and cost him his life in the end. Now, one thing I want to hit on real quick is you were talking about that Radiant Ward up on the top lane. And they had full vision of the Crystal Maiden rotation. So do you yeah. feel they just didn't really read that situation properly and didn't feel as threatened by it as they should have? Or were they not, just not really paying attention enough? Honestly, I don't know. I feel like they maybe just weren't paying attention because you, you would know that this early into the game, you know, with the Fury swipes up, with the Overpower, and with the Crystal Maiden Frostbite, that's going to be a dead Queen of Pain or an Earthshaker if either get out of position. And when you see a Crystal Maiden coming around, obviously going for a gank, you know that you know you're, the, you're probably going to lose that fight. I mean, when they hit level 6 maybe on Jewels and level 6 on the Earthshaker, they could definitely take a 3v2 situation with the AoE. But only level 2 or level 3, they I don't think they really should be fighting it. They should just be trying to get the farm up and taking advantage of the Jewel lane. Uh -huh. um, there's another thing that uh, could have been done with this Earthshaker on the top lane. Well, they trade hits a little bit back and forth. But um, uh, one thing that was popularized for about like 2 or 3 weeks, both in the pub scene and the competitive one, uh, is the ability to block the creep wave back behind the top tier one tower and just pull them into a little uh, trying to think of the word uh, just a little overflow in the tr the tr outcrop in the trees and they will be able to kind of keep that experience away from Titan for an extended period of time making sure the Rubik stays at level one and making sure that they can actually do a really powerful push la later on in the near future when they can kind of unlock that entire wave four or five waves of creeps so I'm not sure exactly why they didn't opt for that strategy, at least for a couple of waves, but that does put them in this aggressive position, and it has cost them once already. Oh yeah, I think at this point... Oh, actually, I'm bot lane. Ice does get picked out. Um, and that is good. It's 1-3 to three at the moment, the score, so Medeski may be getting a slight turnaround, but I think this top lane, I mean, usually they... Oh, mid lane. Jobin getting ganked. Mm -hmm. Taking some hits here, Net will assist in the kill, taking a lot of damage from the poison ticks, and he will actually fall. So it is a one for one, but the experience didn't go to that Viper. And now up on top lane, throwing down the telekinesis, uh, Urshaker away, but the scream is going to be enough. <laughs> no deny from Ursa. Very nice from Ohio. He was one hit from death with that scream. The damage over time would have killed him, but Ohio claims him instead. Look at Jay being all sneaky. He's biting his way through the trees, and they want to go in on Ohio. Yeah, still gets the Fisher off, a couple of right clicks, and that's going to be the death of the Ursa. Can they claim another? No, it's right now the Earthshaker falling, and Net forcing the Queen of Pain back, low on mana, use the magic stick, but with this opening in the trees, going to try to pursue. Unfortunately, it doesn't really have the movement speed to catch the jewels at this stage down. Uh, Viper, can, or actually, sorry, it's going to be Nagasar and connecting, and should actually be able to get the net, but the night vision is not going to allow him to see what he needs to, to actually get that kill. Well, he should have actually had the vision, because they've got a ward sitting sure. right here, but I guess they just felt like they didn't have enough damage. Ursa had only just got back in, into the lane and he wouldn't have been able to make it down, so Jules just would have blinked away and it was a lot of time wasted for KYX by running all the way up there to not find a kill. Uh -huh. And I Honestly, I have no idea how KYX is doing this in the mid lane. We haven't paid much attention to that, but you would have thought that Joven on the Viper should be absolutely dominating a melee hero such as, you know, the Naga Siren who didn't even pick up a, um, oh, they're going for a gank actually, speaking of mid lane. Yeah, yeah, he's taking a lot of damage here. The Soul Sunder will come out, but using the first Song of Siren of the Day will be a TP scroll away. And that uh, will be enough for him to get out of dodge, but he will be without that ultimate for quite some time. Yeah, I mean, it's oh, top lane now. Jules is going to get initiated. Oh, net. Nice haste room pickup coming in. He's already been lifted up. The Frostbite to guarantee the kill, and Rubik will snag the last hit on that one. They were already diving him, pressuring him pretty hard, but with that Crystal Maiden, there was no running in any direction. In this early game, honestly, going the way of Titan at the moment, which 
I mean, I suppose it's slightly expected, but in the, the whole time down bot lane, Jesse Vash has been free farming net worth wise. He is topping the charts. Ursa, um, Ohio, has been getting kills. No, actually, he hasn't got any kills. He's been getting assists, but not much farm. So he is falling behind a little bit. But of course, Ursa doesn't need very many items. He really just needs phase boots as just a, a baseline of items. And he can just auto attack anyone and do a lot of damage to them. But they're going to have to watch out because I think when Jesse Vash does start joining the team fights with the Queen of Pain, as soon as Jules hits level uh, six, we're probably going to see a Lifestealer Bomb going onto maybe mid, net, mid lane, taking down KYX while you're picking a team fight, trying to push the tower down bot lane. And I think that at that point they should be able to turn it around because Mineski's lineup really, I would say, comes into dominance when they hit level six on most of their heroes because they all have got very strong level six spells. The early game is all right, but... I'd say about the 10-minute mark is when Mineski is going to start playing a lot more aggressive and either take the game back or lose enough team fights that it's going to be unsalvageable. Mm -hmm. For sure. Now, one thing I want to say about the the lineup that they picked up here is the Visage is, generally speaking, the, the tri-lane master. He's the one who's going to be able to put out the most pressure in the laning stage. But down on the bottom lane, he's only done so much. He's helped out with one Elder Titan kill alongside the Lifestealer. And he, of course, has guaranteed Lifestealer to pick up the top value of CS. But beyond that... They really aren't getting much of this visage now, and I'm curious to see if that'll change once they get the familiars on the board. But at least for right now, it's just kind of quieted down. Yeah, I think they are waiting, but looks like speaking of the bot lane, they are interested in going on, on going on ice. Yep, damage coming in. He does get the rage off, so this earth splitter might not be enough. Nice familiar stun. The last right click will come across. That is going to be a kill for Jesse Vash, setting his net worth now at 3,700 miles ahead of any other here on the board. On top lane, though, we do see Net and Extinct coming in. Mm -hmm. Very difficult position for them to be in. Uh, nice blink into the trees. Actually, might save him here if he can just TP out, but it's going to be Jay to suffer a heck of a lot of damage. Scream comes out after the Fisher, but it's not enough to bring down Ohio and might get denied here. Just going to try to head and TP, but the dot tick comes and they have to get the deny. However, Jules jumps in for the cleanup on the Queen of Pain, and that ends up being a two for one. Yeah, I mean, they didn't get the last hit on... Ohio on the Ursa, mm -hmm. so I mean it wasn't as good as it could have been, but I mean at least managed to take down the Crystal Maiden and Ursa losing a little bit of gold, and actually now Jules may be going to go down. Yeah, taking too much damage from the Rubik Elder Titan combo, so they were able to bring that down. Meanwhile, mid lane, KYXY snags the tower last hit from Jay, and is now actually being extremely aggressive. This ultimate is on cooldown, so they just have to rely on the poison attack itself, but it might be enough with this Fisher about to come across. Actually uses the Song of Siren once more. Really does not want to fall this early in the game with that much experience, but in the meantime, down bottom, Jesse Vash pushes on the tier 1, gets the last hit on that, and has plenty of cash to finish up his Drones of Endurance. Yeah, and he's doing a ride on farm. Um, 2.3k gold in the bank, and I do wonder what he's going to buy. Like I said, I think armlet and drums would be a nice item choice for him this game, but given that he's kind of hoarding his gold, maybe he's going to go for something a bit unusual, like a Sand and Yasha. Um, and I think it's going to depend. Like, maybe he's holding his gold just, gold just to see what his allies are doing, since they have been losing a lot of kills, and actually on bot lane, he is going to get ganked on, possibly. KOX by coming down. Yeah, he is looking for the ensnare, not going to actually cast it. Uh, his allies really weren't in the position to follow up on that. It actually seemed like they had mixed feelings about trying to pursue on the life. So there, it doesn't seem to be their focus point to actually go on them. And there is actually a Queen of Pain pursuing with the slow, but they can't get in range for the open wound. So it looks like that will not be anything. And he actually does go for the Drums of Endurance. So kind of hesitant, uh, wants to make sure that he's getting the most out of his reliable gold. But um, for right now, at least, he's going to make his rotation up top with those drums. Now mid on mid, ice. a lot of damage coming in. Air Splitter drop down for the Dalgonesis. He won't be able to get the kill on the ET. Instead, Viper himself falls. And a still of the Fisher might be the death of Jay. He, the Fisher block, he cannot get back to his tower to retreat. Hides in the trees as best he can. And the Familiars will be enough to ward them off. Doing some physical damage here. Soul Assumption onto X. Crystal Man gets hit by one of the two stuns. Now Grave Chilled. Slow to a crawl. Will it be enough to bring her down? With his last Soul Assumption, not going to do it. The soul's just expired and actually just does a pretty good job. And on top lane, there. Jesse Vash not getting initiated on. They just keep fighting non stop across the map. This is what usually happens at this point in the game. Um, thought he was going to get initiated and killed, but he did manage to make it away there. Mm -hmm. And on bottom, weren't able to catch it, but KYXY was able to set up a kill for the, against the Queen of Pain.
just using the ensnare to lock her in place, and that's uh, actually a very, very important kill, because this not core Naga Siren is going to be able to do a lot with this farm. Like, you usually just see the support, Naga Siren, she doesn't do too much. Mid lane Fisher does connect, Soul Central will fly, but again, Net lives just by a little bit. Got an uphill miss, that might have been the damage they needed. Either way, not going to net the kill, the Crystal Bait, and she'll heal up with a salve. Yeah, and if you look at the golden experience craft at this point in the game, about 12 minutes, it is going slightly in favor of experience into Titans, uh, realm about 2,500, but gold is just going back and forth across, I mean, both teams, and for gold, I would say the tower being taken down in the mid lane and the bot lane for both teams is going to just even it out, so mostly the farm, you can see CS is going the way of Mineski quite severely, uh, Jesse Vash on 74 last hits already at 12 minutes into the game. But the kill's going the way of Titan, so it's just very, very even. And I mean, you're talking about KYX by then as well, and like, I'm curious as to what item ability is going to go, because normally, I mean, I have honestly never seen a mid Naga Siren before. And he's picked up the drum, so is he going to go for the Vlads and go for a lot more aura, or is he going to go for that, you know, uh, Diffusal Blade pickup and be a little bit more kind of aggressive trying to get kills, or is he going to go for a Vanguard and be tanky, or, I mean, there's so mm. many different item builds he could potentially go for. Sure. Yeah, there are plenty of variants on the Koronaga. I obviously won't need the Vlad since the Ursa has actually just finished that up and is going to be looking towards Russia near. Uh, it looks like Chris Mane's just barely getting out of a gank from the Lifestealer. If he had gone to infest the creep, he might have done enough damage, but it's very, very difficult to call that based on the, the movement there and, of course, just the, the quick TP away from the Crystal Mane to survive. But back to the Naga Siren, um, actually being pursued on the bottom. Luckily, no detection against this Invisorin that he had bottled up. So he's in a pretty good position there, but... Yeah, a lot of different ways to build the Naga. Primarily going to be looking towards a Diffusal Blade for Mana Burn on the Illusions, and maybe even a Radiance just for some split push aura long term. On now top on top lane. lane, a lot of damage coming out. On to Jesse Vash, he goes for the Infest. I'm not sure why he jumped out of that creep. Should have waited until the creep, forced the issue. Instead, he takes the last right click from Ohio, and they TP away. At least Ohio does. X is heading for the hills, and Queen of Pain is in pursuit. A big Sonic Wave will net the kill there. That was a little bit of a misplay there. I think you might have. I honestly think you must have misclicked there because he had no reason to jump out of the creep. He could have waited until TP is aboard. And now Ohio is actually just going to go straight for the Roshan. He's got his flats, yeah. got his face boots, and nothing's going to be stopping him. And I don't think Mineski even know. I mean, you would think at this point of the game they would be aware with that Vlad's up, but I suppose that they haven't got the Visage familiar scouting it out, and they're just either going to give him a free Roshan and try and exchange the top tower possibly for it. Yeah, I think they have a pretty good idea just because they have seen some heroes roaming around that area. They have heard the global effect of the Enrage spell going across the battlefield, but the bottom line is because of that dire advantage, it's very hard to initiate on that position. And he does claim a free Roche, bringing him just below level 11, and of course has that Agency mode will be very aggressive in the near future. Yeah, and even though Jesse Vash was pulling away um, in terms of last hits and farm net worth, Net worth is what I mean. Uh, in the early game, you can see now 14 minutes into the game, Nagasarin is on 6k net worth, 2,000 gold in the bank, and Ohio is on 5.8, and Jesse Vash is really just falling behind. And I think they just they need to maybe find some kills. KYX by playing quite aggressively in the jungle. He knows someone's there, I would assume, since he did gain a little bit of experience then, and he is going to be rotating around. But yeah, I mean, Mineski at this point, where the hero should be coming online very, very soon. I mean, they've got. Level 6 on the Earthshaker, O is level 7, Joven has got the mech up, um, and he's level 10, so maybe wait for level 11 on him, but on the whole, they probably need to make some plays now, because late game, they, they don't have the heroes to carry the late game, unless they have a fantastic early game, and they haven't been having the best early game, like, uh, drawing even, if not falling behind. Yeah, I uh, definitely agree with you there. I mean, the Queen of Pain is kind of on par to the late game carry potential of Naga Siren until you move in from that four-slotted realm to that six-slotted realm. It's actually something that most people don't consider is that a six-slotted Naga Siren with the amount of illusions that she puts out is actually one of the highest damage per second potential heroes in the game now in top lane. A lot of damage coming out. Urshaker wandering in where he does not belong. Drops an Echo Slam, but is not really trading much. Now Ohio taking a lot of damage. Soul Assumption does come across. It should be the last right-click to pop the Aegis of the Immortal, but the question is whether or not they can claim the second kill. They don't have the Shadow Strike relying only on Viper slows, but is locked in place with that Frostbite, and that'll be enough for Ohio to almost finish him off. Mechanism keeps him up. Huge Sonic Wave from Jules, and right now he's still up. He's still kiting, and they will bring down Ohio, trading one for one against the Viper. Now, Josh, kiting away with that Grave Chill. Big Soul Assumption coming out to try to bring down Ice, but there's the Song of the Siren, locking them in place. Can they get anything out of this with the Spirit? I believe they should be able to drop that down. Yes, here's a quick Riptide, but Jules dives under the tower. Gets netted up, now taking some hits. 
but might be able to avoid this just because the only last man standing is KOX by himself. Has one more Riptide, throws it out, but now is slowed in a lot of stunts heading his direction. X is coming in, trying to help out, needs a good spell steal. He will claim the Fisher, but it's too little too late. KOXY has dropped, and now Jay taking a lot of damage. Tries to get a stun off, but to no avail. Jay, Jesse Vash moves towards the Crystal Maiden, now changes focus over to the Rubik. Does have that armlet, a lot of damage about to come out. Is it enough? The last right click will net the kill, and with some great stone forms, he will get the kill on the Crystal Maiden for a triple in the end. Ursa coming back in. This fight will not stop. Ohio going to town, but afraid of what that Viper can do. Now in retreat, but the second you start retreating, you don't have stand a chance. There's just too much slow from this Viper, and Ohio will drop once more. 40 seconds in the grave. Ice under his tower taking hits. Man mode from Jesse Vash. He will assist in the kill, bringing down so many of Titan's heroes. That was a huge fight. The kills, I, I can't even remember who died, but I'm pretty sure everyone on Titan died at least once, if not twice. Mm -hmm. And Jules lost a triple kill streak, but at the, I mean, at the moment he's picked up the ultimate orb and he's heading towards that hex, and that was a huge turnaround for Mineski. That's what we were both just asking for, saying, hey, Mineski, you're falling behind. You need to do something. And they they definitely did something then. They got the top tower and they just caught up in kills and, in fact, are overtaking now. And I reckon if we look at the gold graph... Yep, it's gone right down from that dip of 2,500, straight up to Mineski territory. So many kills in that point, but really nice comeback from Mineski. Absolutely. And, I mean, a couple of misplays. Like, Ohio was focusing down the Viper, the one target that's designed to keep away from Actually, him as much well as possible. Actually, yeah. Still action oh. pursuing. Jay will not connect with the stun, and I don't think they'll be able to actually fall through with this, but the familiars might be able to make something happen. Stoneform, they go for the Echo Slam. That's going to give them the aftershock they needed. Just familiar stun one, familiar stun two. Gets them in range for this Viper Strike, but KY pops the song and heads home. And I guess that is a song down again. It's only got two minute cooldown at this point, but still any opportunity they have now to, to push should be quite handy. But of course at the same time Jay used the Echo Slam to try and do a little bit of damage and slow him down for Joven to get in range. So that's going to be on cooldown for another two minutes as well, but... Whew. This has turned into a game that was going in Titan's favor into quite an even game, and I think this next Roshan is going to be contested quite and heavily. Contested quite mm -hmm. heavily. It's not going to come up for another, I think, five minutes or so. Um... But when it does, if they have got a Blink Dagger on Jay, potentially, or the Basher picked up on Jesse Vash, it would be a really scary team fight. But at the same time, KYXY, 3.0k well, 3K gold, 3.0k gold, um, in the bank. And uh, actually, on top lane, Jules getting initiated on. Yeah, taking a lot of damage here. Frostbite just going to be too much to lock him down. Throws a couple of spells the other way, but X just eats that right up. He's going to spell steal it and have a Scream of Pain of his own to send him to the next fray. But, yeah. Uh, there is a lot of item progression that we see from Mineski in the near future. Now rotating, might find the Elder Titan here. Gets the open wounds to start things off, and they have a great Fisher lineup, so although Elder Titan will do some damage, he will fall one versus four. In this position here, they can easily take the Tier 1, unless Titan has something to say about it. No fortification. Uh, they're actually just going to have the Lifestealer tank on the front line and try to burn down the creeps as quickly as possible. No backdoor regen, so they should be able to claim this without much trouble. Yeah, but KYXY has now picked up his Sacred Relic, so he is going for that Radiance build, and I think Mineski now are kind of on a little bit of a timeline. They need to, I would say, get a Rax by 25 to 30 minutes, or at least, no, actually, no, I think they need to get a Rax by 25 or 30 minutes, or they are going to get outcarried by the Ursa as well as that Nagasarin, because Nagasarin is a terrifying carry. Like you were saying, she has some of the highest DPS, and once she gets up the Radiance, she can farm, you know, one, one, two, three camps at the same time as farming a lane, and she can just snowball forward. Absolutely. And Nagasar and one of the scariest carriers to see actually in bot lane. Ooh, Joven. Yeah, very aggressive position for KYXY, but it almost paid off. Unfortunately, the mechanism came out for Jehovah, so he will be able to survive. And the TP support, two TP scrolls, essentially wasted unless they can actually close the distance on KYXY. Obviously, he's just going to be able to TP away here and yeah, close in on that Radiance only 800 gold off. So, yeah, he is moving very, very rapidly towards that exponentially increased farm route. Looks like uh, Ohio really, really wants this Roast to spawn. I'm not sure if they're familiar with the new timer mechanics, but it will be respawning in at minimum one minute and more likely towards somewhere between three and four. Yeah, I think they, they really want to get it. Because um, like I was saying, the next Roshan is going to be absolutely crucial. And Queen of Pain actually not going for a Hex. I thought she was going to go for a Hex pickup, but she's gone for that Lincoln Sphere. So quite interesting. Oh, no. Jesse Vash oh, Jesse Vash down bottom. Oh, that's painful. Nice, fast. Rage Armlet. He's actually... 
able to outmaneuver them pretty effectively, but if they get in range for the ensnare, all will be lost. Goes for instead the image split, and it looks like Jessica Vash will be able to retreat. So, very, very close call, but quick and fast fingers, and there he's able to get on out of there. Yeah, and uh, I, I thought Jesse Vash had done it again where he jumped out of the creep too soon, but of course he does have the armlet, so he can just toggle that out for free health. And, I mean, I was just going to say, Jules, getting the uh, the Lincoln Sphere, I find that a very interesting item choice, just because at the moment I wouldn't say Titan have got any hero that, you know, there's no Batrider, there's no Beastmaster. She could have just gone for a BKB and, you know, BKB'd out of the Frostbite, uh, BKB'd out of the net, BKB'd... Um, she can't BKB out of the telekinesis, but I guess if Ruby gets in range, she can, you know, just blink away or pop the BKB then blink away. But, I mean, Lincoln's is going to give her that survivability for one spell, of course, but if they do have, you know, Crystal Maiden popping up on her face or the Song of the Siren coming out first, I think she's going to be equally in a decent amount of trouble. Mm -hmm. Now it might be a clash towards the jungle. Both teams know, generally speaking, the positioning of the other, but it looks like they're just going to be forcing the illusions back and... X and KOXY are going to get out of that very dangerous position. As far as the Lincoln's pickup goes, there's just, I mean, there's some benefit to it that the BKB doesn't have. Like you said, the telekinesis is instantaneous. You can't break out of that, so it's pretty important to be able to negate the spell, the gank as soon as it happens. It'll make sure that the next maybe gank or two attempt on jewels won't be as fortuitous as the ones previously, because they've always been able to start with a frostbite, and from there, jewels is just locked in place. Okay. And said, oh yeah, damage coming bottom. Uh, looks like they're not going to be able to finish the job, though. And uh, TP, or just rotation from the supports, forcing back the Titan team once again. But yeah, uh, the Lincolns, it's, it's more instantaneous. And another cool thing is you can put it on the Life Stealer. So if you're afraid of him getting netted by the Naga Siren, then you can also negate that spell cast for him and kind of play a supportive Queen of Pain in that role. Yeah, I mean, I think it is a useful item, but like I was saying, I just don't think the Maneski are going to be able to outcarry in the late game. And Lincoln's Fear, it's one of those items that you get when, well, usually you're intending on dragging the game out because it doesn't really add too much damage. It adds a bit of survivability, but a BKB is a lot cheaper. And if she wanted to go for the long-standing game, I mean, I feel like they shouldn't... Oh, gosh, she got in a little bit of trouble there. Um, but yeah, go for the long-standing game. Oh, actually, never mind. They're all funny. Ooh, X-Bomb breaks out. X is dropping very, very quickly. He steals a rage. That's not going to help him here. Big ultimate coming from the Viper Strike. Going on to Ohio. He slowed very significantly. Sonic Wave won't be enough to bring him down, but they bring down the Elder Titan on the front line. Just shrugging off that Elder Titan ultimate, but now eating the Song of the Siren, and that will allow the retreat for both the Crystal Maiden and the Ursa. But now that they're low HP, this might open up Roshan for Mineski. Yeah, if Mineski could take this rush down, that would be a very, well, significant uh, turn of events, especially because, like you're saying, Nagasar and Ultimate on cooldown now, and Nagasar and Ultimate is the, I would say, the best skill for winning Roshan, because you can just cast that song with the Siren and then just run in and take the Roshan if it's very low, and without having that up, it does mean that Titan are going to be losing most of their initiation power. They've got the Elder Titan, of course, but it's not really comparable, I would say, to Nagasar and Definitely. But. And of course he has his Earth Splitter on cooldown as well, so only really looking at that Echo Stomp. But for right now they're just kind of trying to batter down on the Tier 2. Uh, right now they do have a great position Earthshaker, but if Smoke does get dispelled, still has a 4 staff if he's looking for a perfect Fisher block. Still, I have to question the decision of why not go for Roshan there. The, the gradual push up on this Tier 2 hasn't seemed to have make much magic happen during that those death timers, and now they are without a Roche, and Ursa will be claiming that as soon as he can. Now Jewel's in a bad spot, does get hit by the stomp, able to blink out because of the Radiance tick, and uh, probably going to retreat from here. Yeah, they all just doing a bit of farming, and I guess maybe they felt they didn't have enough damage to take down the Roshan quickly. They don't have the Ursa with that ability to just rip through the Roshan. And I mean, Joven, he's gone for the mech. He hasn't really gone for damage items. And he's gone for the Arganims as his next item choice. So he's not going to be picking up anything like an MKB. Something to take down. Oh god, Jewel's on top lane. Yeah, he's already <laughs> very, very low HP farming there. And the Ursa welcomes that opportunity to blink right on top of him. But knowing that he can't catch up to a haste and target, it's just going to actually TP away before any more trouble can come his way. Um, but yeah, now that Mineski have kind of lost a little bit of map control, they're in retreat. That's the opportunity for the Ursa to head straight for Roshan right this moment, and not too much that Mineski can do about it now. And I agree with your point about the fact that they didn't all have all that much damage. Maybe if the Visage had gone for a Medallion instead of a Ghost Supper, it might be a different story, but right now they just they did not feel confident in the Roshan. They tried to go for Tier 2, and in the end they don't get either. But Jay is actually 
smoked up now with a life still a baby inside of him and ready to to make make a play on someone, but <laughs> Tyner actually smoked up at the same time heading into the jungle of Maneski and I think maybe Owa is going to be the only one to suffer for this since he did just TP down to that bot lane and uh, I feel like he is very wanted at the moment. Extinct has got that blink dagger up and could just blink in and get that telekinesis off and just kill him very, very quickly. Yeah, mid, ice drops down very, very swiftly now. They can move towards the tier two, but knowing where the opposition is, Maneski wants to man up on Josh. Not going to happen. They find jewels instead. The link gets popped. And the Queen of Pain will be dropped down. Um, one big weakness, as we were kind of discussing, there's many weaknesses to Lincoln's, but the biggest one that I see up against a Rubik is the fact that he can break with Fade Bolt. Now, Jesse Vash against Ohio. Jesse Vash is actually doing a lot of damage. Ohio almost dropping, wastes his BKB charge. He will drop down. A huge Echo Slam coming out, dropping down net with two quick swings and a belated retreat song from KYXY. And my goodness, I think they really underestimated the damage potential of Mineski there. Yeah, I think they they must have, and those lucky bashes coming out from Jesse Vash did actually just, you know, lock Ohio down in position. There was nothing you could do, and it looks like now they will be going for that rush, and Arginum Scepter picked up on Joven, so he's just going to be able to span that out incessantly on everyone who comes in range, and KYXY knows something the Saurian, so he can't even just try and ninja steal it. Still may try. I mean, the illusions do radiate an aura, but of course they can't attack Roshan directly. Uh... Might go oh for a KYXY Aegis Denial of some sort. Right now, all, all he's accomplished is bring down the Life Stealer. And to X blinks in, actually trying to go for a kill, but now getting fissured at only 160 HP. Gonna have to use the Blink Dagger most likely to get out. But still, they have prevented the Roshan. That was really nice man maneuvering, and <laughs> in the end, they actually forced them out of pit and are looking to get a kill on Jay right here. Yeah, I don't know how Jesse Vash dropped so quickly there, and that Roshan now is on virtually no health. 3,000 HP and Ursa is up. He is saying yummy, yummy. Thanks for the delicious <laughs> treat, Mineski. This for is sure, probably sure. probably why Mineski just didn't feel comfortable going for the Roshan, just because it took so long for them to get it down. Titan were ready to, to fight again and were able to take down the Life Stealer in that time it took. And now Ohio with the Aegis. He's got his Blink Tiger BKB, Vlad's Face Boots Aegis, and he is ready to get kills. And at the same time, KYXY is going to be slip pushing every single lane. I mean, this is traditional <laughs> C-style Dota um, circa miracle with just pushing down every single lane you can at once and annoying them. Rad Dota. And that's what KYXY is going to be doing. He's got the TP scroll, so he can help out, but at the same time, he's going to be pressing all the lanes, and Ohio doesn't really need him at this point. Who can really stop Ohio? They can pop the Viper Strike on him, sure, but he's got the Aegis, so if he dies, he'll just come back in and blink back on their faces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was just a very interesting turn of events there. I've, I mean, the one big limitation for Life Show's build up right now is Basher, Armlet, great for offensive aspects, but not the greatest in a defensive mindset. I mean, of course, you can Armlet toggle, you can get some extra HP, but in general, it's hurting you as much as it's helping you. And in that situation, burning from Radiance continuously, if you don't have Rage, you can't Armlet toggle. So it just put Jesse Basher in a pretty bad spot, combining that with a couple of lucky Bash procs from Roshan. And that really, really headed south for Maneski really quickly. So um, now I guess Jesse Vass is going to move towards an Assault Karas, looking for a Nakes Bomb gank with the Queen of Pain. Maybe they can get something working for them, but for right now, it kind of seems like it's turned on its head with Titan definitely yeah, leading the charge. If you look at the Golden Experience graphs now, it is dropping back down in favor of Titan or just straight into the zero bar. And I mean, this game has just been back and forth the whole time. I mean, Mineski, I mean, I still don't think they have a, they have a really strong late game lineup, and I feel like they are going to be grouping up very soon and trying to get some some more kills, maybe get a peek off, because KYX is going to be snowballing. I think that's why Jules has got that Life Stealer bomb inside of him. We do see four heroes rotated up to top lane at the moment, and probably Jay going to be joining them soon. They've got all their spells up. They've got the Echo Slam, they've got the Sonic Wave, they've got the Mech, they've got the Argonim Scepter on uh, Viper, and they could really win a team fight now and possibly even go for the racks if they need to. But of course, it is going to be quite hard with that Aegis up on Ohio. They need to get that down. Absolutely. I mean, they can kite them for one life, but a second one is going to be much easier said than done. Uh, in this position here, Ohio, like you say, he's got all of his core items. He could go for something like a heart or actually like a dozen different items, but for right now, he is a pretty happy camper just to start fighting because he has his BKB out of 9 seconds, wasted it once, but beyond that, he's in a pretty good position to be very aggressive. We do see another Lincoln Sphere pickup. Uh, again, for the Naga Siren, she benefits a lot from the stats, being an illusion-based hero. But on top of that, 
I, I think it's even more relevant than Lincoln Sphere transference, where you can actually put the buff of Lincoln Sphere on Ohio. If Ohio can't be Viper Striked, this guy is unstoppable. Yeah, no, I, I do agree with that. The Viper Strike is the only thing they've got that goes through BKB. And until they get that Hex up on Jules, I mean, that's going to be their main initiation tool. They could have the Earthshaker get the Fissure off and force stuff himself in for the Echo Slam, but, I mean, at the time that takes, probably going to see the uh, BKB popped on Ohio anyway, and, and, I mean, at that point, Mineski losing a lot of their damage from the Magical Spells, so, I don't know, this game is really slipping out of the grasp for Mineski, I would say. They, uh, I feel like they need to make a play now. Because it's, it's going to get harder and harder and harder as the time goes on. And Bastro even picked up on uh, on high. I don't know if you called that or not. But that's going to make it even more deadly as soon as he gets... Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, on bot lane. Okay, we're well, Oh, well, actually, yeah. That's not a good spot for him to be in. The Rage will expire, though, and the Song of Siren, unless he gets some crazy bashes, KOXO is going to be fine. Looks like the Familiars are going to try and make something happen, but just a little bit too quick on his feet. Dodge about both the Stone Forms, and boom! Goes the Dynamite. Queen of Pain dropping down. Ohio pops the BKB, now Viper Striked, trying to run away. He's actually going to be able to avoid that Fisher Sun. It looks like they're all going to be A-OK, -okay, but yeah, I guess Queen of Pain just really, really wanted to get in the mix of things. Maybe if there was a Scythe there instead of a Lincoln's, it might have been OK, but... Just too much counter damage, especially with that Ancestral Spirit's Natural Order. Yeah, that Natural Order is just so painful. And I mean, Nagasaren is a semi-carry. I didn't, I didn't bring this up because I didn't think about it until just now. But she is that good mix of physical as well as magical damage with the, the uh, Riptide and her illusions and, um, you know, with the items she's gone for. They combo really well with that, that Natural Order from the uh, Elder Titan. Mm -hmm. It does make it an absolutely devastating mix in a late game. All they have to do is really have Elder Titan send out that Astral Spirit and you know, just kind of glare aggressively at anyone on the side of Mineski and they'll be taking half their life, along with KOXY awesome. Illusions and the Riptide. Mm -hmm. If you're losing all your natural armor, if you're dropping into zero armor as per agility and base armor, and then you're taking the Riptide on top of that, five armor reduction, negative values is not where you want to be against the Ursa right now. And uh, on top of that, like you mentioned, she went for the Radiance. They have quite a bit of magic damage flying around from Crystal Man and Rubik, and everything just hits so darn hard. So you have to go for a bunch of tank items for Mineski. Had to go for the Mechanism and the Agonims for Razor, or for Viper, whether or not he wanted to. And it's still, it doesn't seem like enough. They get shredded one way or another. Yeah, and we do actually see now Titan smoking up, and when he's going to pick off, there is Jay on the bot lane, but he will be able to TP out. Ooh. But yeah, I think, oh, I don't know, Mineski's lineup was so early game oriented and they just didn't take the fights they needed to. And it looks like uh, Soul Curie is going to be the next starter for Jesse Vash. So like we were mentioning on the, with the negative armor now, that will help a little bit. But is it going to be enough is the question. Especially because I suspect that we're probably going to see an AC picked up in the not too distant future on someone from Titan. Be it uh, Ohio, not usually seen the AC picked up on him. I think maybe to be better on KYXY, but he might be going for more, you know, slip pushing items like the Manta style. Um, but either way, I think again, if anyone does decide to get an Assault Curious on Titan, it's just going to absolutely rip through everyone in Mineski even more. They're going to drop in half a second. It's going to, actually, I think if, what Mineski needs to do smoke up and bait out a BKB on Ohio. If they could bait the BKB out over and over again, just kind of going forward, picking little skirmishes and then using their mobility to get out. I mean, they've got the Blink on the Queen of Pain, they've got the Force stuff on the Earthshaker, as well as the Fissure to kind of block someone off, and they've got the Grave Tool on the Visage. So they've got decent mobility, and if they could just get the BKB charges down on the Ursa, they could maybe take a fight. But at the moment, with yeah. him having, what, an 8 second BKB, there's no way they can mm -hmm. really win a fight unless they get the jump on him. And, and even then, they don't have any reliable stuns apart from, like, the Fissure. And so he's just going to be able to pop that BKB straight away and turn around and just whack him on the face. Sure. I completely agree with that assessment of their combat strategy, but the one weakness they have is they're still up against very mobile heroes themselves. Rubik, despite being support, has managed to farm up a four staff and a blink dagger, and multiple times over has been stealing Queen of Pain's blink. When somebody can go like three full screens across in a matter of seconds, how do you go for that in and out kind of combat? How do you make it so you can force the BKB and not be completely screwed over by a telekinesis that throws you right back into five people? I I'm not too sure. It's definitely a hard situation. And I mean, Maneski's lineup was just designed to dominate. They wanted to have a really strong early game. As soon as they got all the heroes online with, um, you know, level six and so on jewels, he would just roam around the map and get the pick offs and shut down KOXY. And, I mean, that's the ideal situation because they are a lot of magical based damage, which is kind of the early game carry is, you know, a magical hero such as Queen of Pain. But they just didn't have the good early game. Jewels in the top lane, they just, they just 
died too many times and Jay was on level 6 until 15 or so minutes into the game so that Echo Slam which is huge AoE damage just never came online until it was a little bit too late so they just didn't have the early game they needed and Hex finally picked up on the Queen of Pain but that doesn't mean now she doesn't have buyout and she's 6 to 8 so she's not exactly uh, deathless in this game so she's going to have to watch herself very very carefully yeah it's, it's good that she has it but she has to be very very cautious about how to proceed luckily the Roshan I'll actually see the timer come up in just a second here, but yeah, it is going to be a one and a half, just short of that, maybe one and 20 seconds uh, Roshan time, and uh, beyond that, I think they have a little bit of an opportunity to just push out the ways and wait things out, try to get better a better buildup of uh, buyouts and preparation to engage in a really, really long-term 5v5 skirmish. The problem is, if Titan doesn't want to take a 5v5, they don't have to. KYXY has his illusions all over the map. They're spreading radiance, and now we actually see the initiation. Big Echo Slam! Huge Echo Slam coming on the mid lane. Three down immediately. Jay getting that Blink Dagger, using it perfectly. Oh my gosh. What a dunk. That was a perfect initiation by him, but of course at the same time, KYXY's illusions were beating on that bot lane, the tower's down to half health, top tier 2, it's still on full health, but they do immediately have to TP back, so they can't take advantage of those three kills, because the two mm -hmm. heroes from uh, Titan are just so annoying, and I feel like maybe they need to get Boots of Travel up on, on the Queen of Pain, possibly. I mean, it is quite early in the game for Boots of Travel, given her farm, but they do need someone to be pushing out these lanes up to, you know, maybe this point and this point, before they can actually you know, go for a proper team fight because otherwise they're going to be losing a racks. I mean, I can just I can smell the KOX where wants to get an exchange on the racks. Mm -hmm. and now he's the yeah the heart of Tarras. I'm not sure if you mentioned it, but that's a huge HP value not just for him but for those illusions getting the strength to propagate. It's just very very difficult for them to deal with it. You can try to scream them, but unless you have an Agadim's Queen of Pain, you don't have a very easy way of clearing them. At least not efficiently. Yeah, and they don't really have. I mean, they've, they've got a bit of damage, but I, I think at this point it's going to take too many hits and too many spells to take down those illusions, and I guess we'll see now as they do come into mid lane, setting at that one illusion. Well, it takes four hits from Jesse Vash, which is a DPS carry for Mineski. They do actually see the Roshans up, so doing some dewarding, but I don't think they're able to go in. If they do go in, we're just going to see Nagasar and KYX by singing a bit of a song, TPing in and scaring them off, so Roshan it is going to be contested, I would say, by Mineski. They can't really let the Cheese and Aegis go the way of Titan, but it's going to be a very hard fight to contest, given the positioning of, uh, of the Roshan pit in the Dire side. Yep. Still, still a very difficult position with the draft that Aiden's put out. That, I mean, essentially, their draft screams Roshan control, but the ET, the Ursa, and the Nog, the Siren, and being on the Dire, all those com factors come out together. It's always going to be t a very difficult subject to broach for them. But they, they've still, I mean, we've seen them take... So some form of fight with obviously what we just witnessed on the mid lane and if they can just kind of find those opportunities continuously maybe right when Naga Siren splits use those illusions as ways to just get more and more echoes off with their initiation I actually think they still could make things happen right now in the mid lane they're gonna go for the scythe on Ohio a lot of damage coming out they try to force half him away they mech him up will it be enough right now Jesse Bash can't close the distance slowed down by that air splitter he's gonna retreat but that's a lot of commitment with the lifestyle having been inside the Queen of Pain for over a minute and a half. Mm. But... Uh, what, are, what can Mineski do now? They can't even pick up the Ursa. And I guess that is one PKB popped in exchange for what Sonic Wave, which will be back in 100 seconds, and a Hex charge. So, I mean, in that respect, I, I suppose it is good. BKB now down to 7 seconds, but, I mean, KYXY is probably the biggest problem at the moment. 40 minutes into the game, Naga Siren, 383 CS as well as 4-1 to 7. Her net worth is over 21,000. And she is the one, I would say, who's just going to be pulling way further ahead. And you can see, though, the big suffering point is for um, Titan is everyone else. Uh, X is on 6k net worth, Net is on 4k net worth at 40 minutes into the game, and Ice is even only on 7k. But the Naga Siren and the... Uh, the Ursa are just so big, and if Mineski can get them down, you know, we, like we saw last fight, Ice, X, and Net just are absolutely nothing, but it's going to be the big problem is taking down the Nagasaran and taking down that Ursa, because they're just so scary. And Jules, <laughs> calling it now, he's dead. Oh, yeah, in a terrible position there, unfortunately, <laughs> and good movement from Titan to find that pickoff opportunity, and now they can kind of make something of this. Uh, of course, the Queen of Pain doesn't have buyback, as we were talking about with the Scythe pickup originally, 
And so this is an opening where they can claim this Roshan with no trouble at all and even make some movements uh, towards some of the uh, outer tier towers, like the tier 2, with at least the illusions from the Naga Siren. Yeah, and Ohio actually going to fight a double damage room too, so that, that Ursa is going to be taking down the Roshan in a couple of seconds. He's picked up the uh, Abyssal Blade because, you know, why not? He's got enough gold to buy it and have buyout still, so... Well, gonna go for the infest inside Jay. Has that blink available? Gonna look for an opportunity, but that radiance puts the blink on cooldown if he gets too close to that Naga. Now the Roshan dropping down to about 60% HP. The Viper Strike will fly into Ohio, but he's four staffed away. And now it's Jay Hoven in a very desperate situation. Abyssal Frostbite locked down. Huge damage coming out to Jay Hoven, but he is able to go scepter. And now Ohio's getting turned around on big Earth Splitter coming across. Viper and Ursa both fall. Oh, there's a buyback, but a huge echo going across. It won't be enough. Net go and pops his freezing field doing a lot of damage here and everybody from Mineski is down only one to retreat is uh, Josh on the visage and that's not going to be enough to really make anything of this situation I never knew you got an item for a five man echo slam that's kind of cool oh wow I actually have not seen that one either it was a freaking good echo slam it's just there are yeah. no creeps it was in the jungle so yeah, it, it, Echo Slam really isn't all that viable, unless you've got like an Argonim Scepter and a Veil of Discord of 42 minutes into the game. <laughs> but other than that, a good attempt by Mineski, but this is kind of the big flaw in their lineup, is they needed to win the game. I was saying 30 minute mark is going to be the, the point where if they haven't got a Rax, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. And, I mean, KYXY has just been snowballing forward. Ohio is equally fat. And Mineski just, they I don't think they have enough damage to take down KYXY. I, don't, I just think they don't. Even if they use everything, even if they ignore the other four heroes on Titan, I don't think they'd be able to take down KYXY, at least not until, you know, he just got out of the hex and popped that Song of the Siren and just slid it away. Yeah. Very, very difficult to accomplish, especially with their current lineup. It's technically possible if we start looking towards things like the Aghanim Scepter and the Veil on J, maybe uh, a little bit more nuke damage and moving towards an Ethereal Blade on Jewels, they could focus Fire him down that way, but... It's just a dizzying prospect trying to chew through that much HP in that short of time frame. Because as you mentioned, just one second of casting, free casting is going to allow him to escape. And that's just something they really can't afford if they commit that much to him. Yeah, and no, we can see now they are heading up to top lane in Ohio. That was a, a weird stun by Jay. I guess maybe they had vision of... Ohio for one second, but he's hiding the wrong side of the trees, and now Jesse Vash might be initiated on. No, he's just gonna pop the rage to get away. But I mean they can't even they can't even push very far forward. And I think this is maybe gonna be the end for Mineski. At least for this game, it is a best of three. But it's kind of at the point where they're waiting for Titan to make a big mistake. Yeah. And it's it's difficult in this position to even make a mistake because all you have to do is just gradually push them out with the Naga Siren illusions, and eventually you'll starve them out of their own jungle. They'll start force them back into their own base. Nothing will really happen. We do see a potential for a big echo up on the top lane. They're all pretty well clustered together. They do have the next bomb. Here it comes. Big damage. Net is gonna get dropped very very quickly. No, the Ghost Scepter. The freezing field turns it around. Did Ohio deepsing down on Jesse Vash. He Lifestealer will survive. The Aegis the Immortal in the ground. Now, being pursued, Life Stealer is going to run from ice. It's actually Ohio that's being focused on very, very hard. x go for the Spell Steal. Doesn't get it off the Lincolns, but Ice taking a lot of damage on the front line. He will drop Pursuit from Jules, trying to bring down one more target. Looks like Ohio's pretty close, but that Shadow Strike expiring. Blink Dagger, 2-1. Oh, it's going to be put on cooldown, and that should be his second death consecutively. Meanwhile, down on bottom, after that kill, we do see that there's tons of damage coming to the melee racks. KYXY is still in the base, gonna pop off that song, TPing out in just a moment, but he's already done the damage he was intending and forced them back so that they cannot follow up with any push. Yeah, I mean, and that was the big problem. In a 4v5 situation, they still lost, you know, the Earthshaker, which is, is kind of expected, but... I mean, in the meantime, KYX managed to take down the tower, which was on about half health, and then also get the racks to 80 health. And I mean, if KYX had actually decided to target down the range racks, they would be down one racks already. And this really does put Mineski in such a hard situation. I think maybe at this point, I, I mean, another thing they could try doing. Oh, actually. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, about. I'm not sure exactly what he thought he was going to accomplish there, but essentially he tried to push this tier 2 tower by himself after three of his allies had already TP'd away, and obviously the respawning reinforcements had other plans for him. 
it just shows the desperation um, that they're feeling at the moment. But I think Maneski, maybe they could get a smoke up, Queen of Pain with the life still inside of him and, and possibly Joven. And maybe they could find KYX and take him out. And then, I mean, KYX would buy out, of course, because he's got 4.8k gold in the bank. But, I mean, do that two times in a row within six minutes without having anyone else backing them up. And maybe Maneski then could get a tower down. Mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine what else they can really do. Yep, I mean, right now I gotta say that it's not just the core heroes that have been doing amazing work. We see th things in the team fights actually down and bottom. Right now, Jay in a bad spot, abyssaled, and a quick overpower almost finishes him off. It's gonna be Elder Titan's spirit to do the finishing blow since he did pop the Ghost Scepter. Um, but still, a free, easy kill for them. Jewel's gonna do a little bit more counter push, but has to be careful or they'll do the exact same thing to him. But uh, anyways, uh, I really do want to comment on, while we do watch a little bit of KYXY split push up on top, and actually the they're casting multiple spells on the illusions just to try to burn them down faster. But uh, as, I, yeah, as I was saying, the one thing to keep in mind is the supports are doing work in these fights from Team Titan. I mean, we do see that Crystal Maiden was able to survive through multiple initiations, get uh, at least three or four seconds off from Freezing Field, and on top of that, the spell steals from Rubik have been very, very... Powerful. I mean, we do have the Sonic Wave that we've seen stolen multiple times despite the Lincoln Sphere. And on top of that, of course, the Viper Strike is an easy steal that he's thrown out on Life Stealer time and time again. So this is something that you can kind of expect, but it's still something that I don't think anybody should uh, neglect to mention. Because, of course, X is a great Rubik player and uh, just strutting his stuff for the moment. He now has an Aghanim Scepter and can keep pulling those plays off. Oh yeah, the supports, I mean, on both teams, the supports are doing their best. Jay has gotten off some really nice Echo Slams, and Josh has been doing really nice micro with his Visage Familiars, and I mean, that's kind of the power of supports, is that they'll win you the early game and the late game. They'll do their best to distract the uh, the attention onto them, make it so they have to take the supports down, because if they don't, you know, Ruby's going to create hell, and Crystal Bane with the Freezing Field is going to be doing a lot of damage too. But, oh, speaking of Crystal Bane, this is a very interesting work position. And this is honestly a nice one. I mean, if you look at their vision at the moment, they are steadily but slowly but steadily. Oh no, actually, let's fire it again. Come on, guys, I wasn't talking or yep. anything. Big clash coming out, or an attempt at one. It looks like Josh is going to be able to get out of there with the four staff just barely. And yeah, they're not going to pursue, not going to overextend. They're happy with the status quo of just forcing Jesse Vosh to move to the top lane to counter push against the illusions. And that makes it so that they can do whatever the heck they want to the rest of the heroes on mid. Yeah, and Titan are just, I think they're just going to be pushing slowly but steadily. If they can... Jay's actually might fall. Oh, he's used the Force Tab just barely outside of the Radiance range. Oh, yeah, he's able to get the Blink off. Very fortunate. But in the mid meantime, there is going to be Jay Hoven taking a lot of damage here. Ursa right-clicking him down. Jay Hoven might drop in just a moment. Yes, they get a double kill for Ice, forcing the buyback of the Visage. And this might be the opportunity for Titan to push in for the win. Yeah, they have got... Oh, no, buyouts coming out from everyone, but they do know now if they can push in the two lanes at once. Um, if they can take down the Viper again, that's going to be, the I would say, the main DPS a deal. Deal at Gorn, apart from the Lifestealer, who's gone for more team fighting items at this point, picking up the AC, and he hasn't got anything since he got that AC up, so he's just falling behind in net worth. But, well, no, it looks like Titan is going to play it nice and safe. Maybe they're waiting for the next first gen, which should be up within a, a two to three minutes, I would say. Now, now that it looks like Jay Hoven is trying to pursue on a KY. XY does pop the Lincolns, starts slowing him down quite a bit. Jay is in range, going to connect with the Fisher. This might be the opportunity they were looking for, but here comes that simple Song of the Siren. Quick little farming Riptide. He's not even going to bother TPing away. He feels his illusions can do the work they need to, so illusions are now right clicking down Jay Hoven. Second Riptide should come in a moment, and yeah, they're dropping very, very low, forcing a retreat once again from the Earthshaker. And at this point, I mean, KYXY, 9k gold in the bank. He could pick up his boost of travels and, you know, go for something like a Daedalus in his last item spot for extra, extra, extra damage. Um, that will just be Micro in the Courier so he doesn't get taken away, but... I mean, what... I don't know. I'm, I'm not one to say that, you know, the game is over, but I just I just don't understand, unless it's a bit of trouble picking up on KYXY. Um, I just don't understand what... what Mineski can do. I honestly can't think of anything, really, apart from wait for someone to make a mistake mm -hmm. and and now Roshan's back up so they're all just kind of lurking around there damn I mean they do have some of the tools to punish that mistake I mean they do now have the Abyssal Blade some much needed lockdown 
to focus fire a single target, whether it be the Ursa or perhaps even the Naga Siren. But on top of that, they have the counter push potential with this Queen of Pain's Agonims, where she can spam out her ultimate on a 40 second cooldown. This allows them to survive the siege and deal with the split push, but of course they have to commit a lot of resources nevertheless. Either way, the Roshan will fall. Aegis Immortal in the hands of Ursa. And I believe that was a cheese rush going the way of Rubik. So Rubik has an Aghanim Scepter, a Blink, a Force, a Gem, and some cheese on the side. This is going to be a great team fight for him if he's not initiated on first. Yeah, I think that um, <laughs> this Rubik can go in and get you know a nice lift, cancel that Lincoln's on the Queen of Pain, and take her down before she can get off her ultimate. She has gone for the Argonim Scepter, so I really, really enjoy that item choice on Queen of Pain. Forty second cooldown on her ultimate, she can clear a whole wave, and she should be able to do decent damage to those Nagasar and Illusions. So, I mean, that's going to be very, very helpful, but. Uh, still, she has to watch out because that Lincoln's means nothing. Like you said, can be popped by the Fade Bolt, and now he's got Viper Strike on Extinct. So lift her up and pop her with that uh, Viper Strike, and she's going to be taking a lot of damage, especially because they can easily steal the Blink from her and just chase her down to the end of the Earth. Mm -hmm. And Marcus Aaron. Uh 615 CS at 52 minutes into the game. KYXY is just farming up a storm. Ooh, down bottom initiation. They're going to get the telekinesis. Abyssal, they do get an echo stomp, which is her up their chain of initiation. Now, lots of damage on X. He will drop down. Didn't get a chance to use the cheese. Ohio might be forced to use the Aegis here. Of course, there is on top lane Nagasaran moving towards the push, but that's going to be managed by Lifestayer while we still have these three stunning up Ohio multiple times over. Has a BKB, pops the BKB, tries to turn around on Jay, but he already has that Ghost Scepter up and active. And that means Ohio is in retreat, can't get the blink off, and instead is taking a heck of a lot of damage. Ohio trying to do anything he can, but it's not going to work out for him. In the end, he does fall, and looks like KYXY fell back to his own tier 3 to force back duels. That was a really, really nice fight. Well done by Mineski. Good ultimate from Jay, good follow-up from, J from Joven and uh, Josh Owa. And that was exactly the kind of fight that they needed to take. I mean, the score is still in 32 to 31. Queen of Pain now with the Life Stealer inside of her, and she's going to be hunting down, I think, KYXY, because at this point, if they can take KYXY down, that could be, I mean, a potential to go for a Rax. Of course, KYXY does have buyout, and so does the Ursa, but, I mean, if they can get them down twice, make for, wait for Titan to make another mistake, it, I mean, it, it could be a turnaround for Mineski. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, they do have potential right now. Ice is going to get picked off here, just trying to make something happen on the secret shop. But there's that next bomb at work. Uh, if we haven't seen actually too many successful infest ganks come out from Jesse Fash this game here, but you can show that they still have that aggressive intention, uh, even if it's 54 minutes in. And that's a pretty key kill. As although they might not force buyback, it's still going to do a lot of damage. But the problem is, by having those big heroes, especially the Queen of Pain, out and about, roaming and ganking, it leaves Jay to be the one to farm the illusions uh, alone. And actually, Radiant's dropping him down. He's down to 17 HP. It just hurts so much. But either way, he will be able to survive and walk away back to base. Either It's just it's a difficult position to be in, because they're always penned in. They're always dealing with this Radiant's push. And, I mean, KYX, as you were mentioning, is just getting more and more farmed. Uh, now getting his CS up to 680 and that's just ridiculous. It is. And actually, Jay's picked up Boots of Travel now. So he's going to be... Looks like he's going to be the one defending. I suppose he feels like he... Just stun there casually. Um, I suppose he feels like if he... If he can get a nice um, Echo Slam off from KYXY, he... I mean, I don't think he could bring him down, but he could delay the push long enough to, you know, give his allies an opportunity to push up the mid lane, and Jay's, you know, kind of defending here against KYXY. So I do like the bits travel push pick up. I was saying someone needed to get them, and I would have thought the Queen of Pain would be the one to get it, but she's still getting up at core items such as the Ethereal Blade, so she's not going to have room for it at the moment. Yep. A lot of nuke potential there, as well as the ability to disarm the Ursa. He only has a 4 second BKB, so that adding in that extra ethereal effect on his opposition can be really, really helpful. In the meantime, yes, let's just continue with their screaming and sonic waving down the creep wave. Um, one thing that I wanted to indicate was uh, talking about Naga Siren's item buildup and if there's any way you can progress from this 6 slotted uh, status. I don't think the Defusal 2 is that much of an upgrade, to be honest, because, of, I mean, the Illusion's propagated, of course, but... Really, you still benefit a lot from the stats from the Lincolns. Uh, another option would be maybe like selling the Radiance if you want to change from push to f combat and go for maybe something like a Scotty or a Daedalus. 
Do you have an opinion on that or just kind of um, watch the man work? Yeah, I don't know. I reckon that maybe you could get rid of the Manta, to be perfectly honest. I think Manta's good for kind of pressuring lanes and, of course, for farming up. But when you consider the... I don't know. I, th I think that Manta's one of those items that doesn't help out that much. But actually, Titan has smoked up now and heading towards mid lane, so maybe we're going to see the fight to end all fights coming up. Ooh. Oh, Jules! Yeah, catching him out. He's not in a good spot at all. Lingus the Udon, and Jules is gone. Just a couple of right clicks, and he's out, and he's actually 100 gold shy of the buyback. So now initiating aggressively, KYXY finds two targets. Gonna cancel the song here with Net going on the freezing field. It's gonna be raged out by one. And actually, I think he got the blink off. Jay is out of there. He's not taking any damage. Meanwhile, Net pops his own BKB, taking some hits from the familiars. He will drop. Ghost Scepter was not the right choice there. But Jesse Bash will be right clicked down by Ohio, forced to buy back. No, he is short of it as well. He bought a Demon Edge, and that's the exact amount of gold that he's missing for his buyback. So now they have two down for the count, and they are being pressured by four heroes on mid. Exchange of your mid and your carry for Crystal Maiden is not the best one <laughs> that they could have made. Um, but yeah, that was really not not a good play by Jules. Unfortunately, five heroes off the map, and he just blinks in, you know, blindly into the jungle and does get caught out. <laughs> I like that extra stealing the uh, Viper Strike and just throwing it back. Yep. So we do have a skirmish back and forth. There was the Echo Slam in the mid. It's Kind of bugged out and said five man echo slams. I think it, that counts illusions or something like that, but yeah. either way, items for everyone. And uh, trying to bring down KOX while he pops the song. Meanwhile, down on bottom, a lot back and forth right now. There's going to be that overpower bringing down the visage. He buys back once more. He's spent probably the most buybacks of this game, but it's not going to be enough here. Jay doing what he can to KOX while heading away and still in range of radiance, ticking down very, very quickly. It looks like he'll get to the fountain just barely. No, the riptide connects, so he will fall. And uh, everybody down bottom is currently in retreat. Nope, switches right back, changes gears, and brings down Josh in just a couple of quick swings. Viper Strike over onto Ohio. Visages, familiars, trying to do some damage, but the GG is called in the end. Well, I mean, GG well played to both teams. Mineski had a lot of back and forth fights in the early game with Titan, but unfortunately, Titan's carry potential just pulled way too far ahead. And while they did turtle for a fair amount and just farmed up what total. 716 CS on KYXY. Titan did just pull ahead and played very, very well this game. Definitely. But I mean, I love the draft from the beginning. I mentioned that when we were still on the screen itself, but uh, the way they played it, the aggressiveness of the supports, the general control that they had over the map early. Honestly, this would have been a complete stomp if it wasn't for some amazing plays from the Earthshaker, some good item pickups from the Queen of Pain and in general, good movement from Mineski. Like, they still played aggressively, they still tried to do what they could, but Titan, I think in general, was just much more profound in their strategy, where they picked up the ET to amplify all this damage that they set up from all the four other heroes. So it was very, very difficult from the get-go for Mineski to take this game away, and of course, Titan are very, very skilled players, as we have seen over the past 58 minutes. So, end kill count, 37 to 35, and can't wait for game two. Yeah, and thank you, of course, to Still Series for sponsoring this tournament. And thank you to Pink, Pimp Munkle for um, doing the camera work. You guys can go follow him on Twitter at, at Pimp Munkle. Pimp Munkle. I'll type it in chat because I can't spell it for crap either. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and co-casting Blaze. We'll see you guys in the next game.